So this is the video for making a cooking spoon. So this cooking spoon is one that I just use quite often in the kitchen. It's really um, practical. Uh, just a little bit about the design here. You can see it's not symmetrical. That's not my bad cutting. Um, it's on purpose. So uh, on this cooking spoon, it's got a flat edge like this. So it acts like a spatula so you can push and scrape around in the pan. It's also got another flat edge here, which I find really, really useful for getting the sides of pans and cleaning them. Um, this bit here, which hasn't been cut off, I'll do that with a knife. Uh, we cut that curve there to um, match the corners of our pans to clean them. And this curved surface here um, is quite good for keeping curved for, for bowls. So essentially, a lot of the spoon is for you know, a cooking spoons for moving food around, perhaps a little bit of tasting, but more, more or less, um, it's, it's a cleaning implement and stopping food from burning. So that's why these different angles on here are, are where they are. So to start off with, um, what we are going to do is just go around the blank. So this is the plan view. Um, and we're just going to take off any edges and if it doesn't look very symmetrical we're just going to go around and just take off a few bits so you'll need to refer to the different types of cut um, in the bird carving video um, that you might have already seen if not it's on youtube so you can just check that out so i'm not going to go through the different types of cut because uh, they're all they're all already up there i'm just going to show you how to do it so first of all i'm just going to take off this sharp edge here um, and I'm just going to, it's a fairly tight curve it's going to be, this is going to be for getting in the corners of the pans, it's really useful. So I will just do like a thumb push here and just cross the grain. Like that. And then just checking, I didn't do too much of a bad job of sawing this one actually, it's fairly symmetrical. Um, the end is square, so I quite like it rounded. Yes, so I'm going to round this edge. The reason I like it rounded is when I'm using a cooking spoon, off my hands on, on the back and I'm pushing with it. And if you've got any sharp edges, it can dig in a bit. So um, this is like the, the workhorse of the kitchen, so it just wants to be very practical. So I'm just going to round over these edges again with the same thumb push. And it doesn't need to be perfect at this stage. We're just getting a bit more of that profile that we are after. This is a bit of fairly old cherry, old and dry cherry that I'm using. So it's uh, not as easy as a nice piece of birch. Okay, that's all right for now. That's fairly rounded, so you can see there's our profile. Um, so now, if if the top of the spoon wasn't super flat, then we, we could just go around and we could just flatten the surface a bit. But if it's fairly flat, what I'm going to do is just dive straight into drawing on uh, the, the bowl of the spoon, and then we're going to hollow that out. So for the bowl of the spoon, we're just going to come up perhaps half a centimetre from the edge. You can do whatever shape you want, but uh, I'm going to do more or less a round shape. It doesn't need to be though, you can do whatever you want. There we go. And then I'm just going to hollow that out. So we're going to use the spoon knife. Um, I'm using the Moro 106, 164 sorry, in this video. And um, for this part, we can go that way across the grain. One of the nice, the, the quickest ways to do it is just going across the grain. So the grain's running down the length here, you can see the lines. Um, and if you go across the grain that way or that way, it comes away pretty easy, but not quite as tidy than going down the grain like this. 
So I often do a lot of the work there going across the grain and then um, then I'll come down the grain um, afterwards. So let's give that a shot. So we can do this uh, cut here where essentially um, we're going to push with the fingers like this. Another one we can do is holding the spoon like this and you can come across which is quite nice. When you're doing this one um, do be aware that the thumb is beneath the surface of the spoon so it doesn't uh, catch your finger. And go right across. Now for a cooking spoon you really don't want it to be too deep. It's really important. It's not a ladle what we're making. We are making a cooking spoon so it just wants to be pretty shallow. Um, you're not using it really to serve food, you're using it just for a bit of trying of something. Um, so it really doesn't need to be too deep at all. If you look at a cooking spoon in your kitchen drawer, um, you will see it's not very deep at all. There we go, so that's just it roughed out. Once this was dried, what I would do then, so once we've carved the whole spoon, then I will do a bit more coming down the grain like this, which leaves a much smoother finish. So for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to show you what that looks like now. So imagine you've carved the full spoon, you've let it dry for about three days or, or a week, um, and then you go over it again with the tools and it leaves a much smoother finish. So now when we go down with the grain, it should remove some of these uh, gouge marks that you can see. So I'm just going to guide it again with these fingers. I'm using a flat, slightly flatter part of the knife. And if this was dry, it would leave an even more smooth finish. So it would leave more of a, a polished finish but it's a little bit harder than going across the grain. But you can see the contrast there. Well, hopefully you, you can see the contrast if I move it like this. This part was going across the grain and this was going with the grain. So I would do the same going here and there's various ways you can do that. You can go like this, thumb on the back of the blade. And we're taking off a tiny amount at a time. Try very hard not to go too deep. So if you go too deep, if you really try and dig in, you'll find it really, really difficult to hollow the spoon out. Really hard. It's an awkward tool to get used to, this one. So don't worry if you're struggling. you just got to try it out, get into the groove of it, and you will pick it up. But you can see the bits of wood I'm removing, you know, they are probably thinner you can quite see that but it's thinner than paper very very thin indeed so that's plenty for now but just like the birds you know um, we can carve it when it's green when the wood's really nice and soft so that's why we do carve wood when it's green because it's got a lot of sap in it it's soft we let it dry it hardens up the fibers compact and then we go over it again with the tools once it's dried a week would definitely be fine. More, more often than not, though, it can dry in about three days, but it depends on the uh, hue. What I quite like doing is just doing a good bit of work on the handle and just tapering down the edge a little bit as well of the bowl. So let's do the bowl first. So this is just a personal preference. So I'm just going to do this like thumb lever. And I'm just tapering it down a little bit. This also, it's a way of, um, we can level off the spoon if it's not very flat. Um, you want a fairly flat surface so the bowl isn't very wobbly. So again, thumb on the back. And it's just like a little, little chamfer. And then we're going towards ourselves and we'll come the other way as well. And then what I'm going to do is turn the whole thing around and think about doing the handle. So I'm going to uh, put a big flat edge on the top surface 
and then I'm going to carry on these facets that we've just went up into the neck and we'll carry them all the way around but first I'm just going to tidy this top surface up a little bit so I'm just going to do let's cut towards myself and just tidy it up a little bit just getting rid of any saw marks That's probably okay for now. So if we look at the design of the spoon, we can see it's fatter at that end than the neck. So we have to carve when we're doing the handle this way. And we do the other side. We also have to carve towards the board of the spoon. So I'm going to do a cut towards myself. I'll just angle the knife a little bit. I'm just going to bring it all the way down and try and blend into this facet that we did around the bowl and if it's not so neat there the join just go back a little bit of a thumb push and then we can do the same on the other side try not to dig too much into the neck because you'll be left with a bit of a mess so when you get close to the neck and the grain starts to go uphill you know the knife will just dig in there if you go too far so i'm stopping here before the wood starts to go uphill again i'm stopping about there and then what i'll do is i will just try and match it the other way until that shaving comes off like that um, i've just noticed here it's a little bit of a bobbly edge there so i'll just Blend that in. It's a little bit more tidy. Like that. Okay. You nice if you have a bit of symmetry it does look tidier. So then towards the top of the handle here, I'm gonna carry on these facets all the way around. So that's more or less the top of the spoon done. So now the heavy work comes in the back. So we've still got a pretty square, chunky spoon here. So we need to really thin it down quite a bit. So for a cooking spoon, a straight cooking spoon like this, you want the bowl here to be really nice and thin, um, as thin as possible really, so it slices through food really easily. We're sort of thinking more like a spatula with a little bit of a hollowed out edge. So we really need to thin this down quite a bit actually so we're going to do a lot of work on the back we could probably actually something this thick so this is probably uh, nearly two centimeters we could probably half the thickness you know something along the lines of that and then that would blend in to the handle I quite like a fat handle up here but the ball wants to be nice and thin so we're going to remove a lot of this here but because that's quite a chunk of wood to remove in one go for you to remove all this back that's like half the the ball of the spoon that would be really quite difficult to get rid of all of that in one go with a knife so what we'll do is we'll do one edge like this we'll hold the knife at an angle and we'll take off an edge like down here a strip and then we'll do another strip down the other edge and we'll be left with a high point in the middle a smaller amount of wood to then remove so let's let's give that a go and this is just a method if you just got a knife of how to remove a lot of wood uh, yeah if you don't have an axe or something so we're going to do that chicken cut nice and powerful see we're just taking off an edge that and then we're going to do the same on the other side as well like that so if we look at the 
the profile now we're left with a smaller amount of wood here which we can then remove with a knife or if that was still too much we could remove this edge here and then that edge there and then be left with a bit more in the middle so let's do that So we're just removing all the high spots bit by bit. And because we're going down the length of the green, we're getting a really nice smooth finish. There we go, so it's getting there to the nice thickness now. So what I'll probably do at this stage is then just do the end bit. So we've done the sides. You can see it's fairly thin at each side, um, like that. End still a bit thick. So the angle that we have carved on the sides, we're going to essentially carry on all the way around the spoon. So this angle here that I've done on the side, we're going to just chop all the way around. So let's go for that. This is a cut. It's quite always harder cutting the end grain. So that scissor cut or the chicken cut, it's uh, it's a good one to use. It's really powerful. There we go. So you can see this band here. This. This facet on the edge is sort of more or less the same thickness all the way around. That's what we're after. And it's, you can see the thickness compared to my finger there. It's not very thick at all. And that's what you want for a nice cooking spoon. Really thin it down. It'll work a lot better. So you can see the neck's a little bit thick here. So I want to sort of taper this thin uh, bowl into the handle a bit more because it doesn't really flow too well. So I'm going to try and... Just taper it, something a little bit like that. It should look a little bit nicer. Okay, so that's looking a little bit better now. Uh, see, it tapers from a nice thin to a thicker handle. So what I'm going to do is I'll just flatten the back bit and then I'm just going to take off the edges, chamfer the edges all the way around. Okay, so now we've thinned the head and we've tapered it. We're just going to tidy up the back of the handle. We're going to square it off before we start rounding it over first. I just find that makes it a bit more symmetrical. So, chicken cut. There we go, so top side's done, the back side's been squared, now we can just put our nice chamfer all the way around like we did on the top side. So 
I'm going to start from here. I'm going to do a cut towards myself. Always really satisfying doing this one. Remember to slow down when you get to the neck. Lots of people have real trouble here. They go too deep in the neck and they try and get that messy bit out and it just ends up looking more and more messy and you dig out a little trench. So just slow down when you get to the neck and don't go too deep. Uh, it's a top tip. And while the spoon's facing this way, I'll just do the same on the other side as well. Like that. And I'll just round over the top like this. Then we're going to turn it around and we're going to try and match up this facet here. Um, so bringing this facet, the chamfer, all the way around. See, I'm switching to the tip of the knife just to go through a tighter curve like that and then we'll do the same on this side you might need to go forward do the thumb push again just to match it up so you get rid of any stragglers and then we'll carry this chamfer all the way around if you haven't already done it so any sharp edges you just want to get rid of and that's essentially it there's your cooking spoon so this has all been done green so i would let this dry now so at least three days but a week might be better let it dry the moisture will come out the fibers will compact and then we can go over it again with the straight knife tidy it all up make it look a lot neater and the spoon knife for doing the bowl and then you would oil it uh, with danish oil or linseed oil and my favorites these are uh, really good because they they actually polymerize so the the oil sets um, which means that when you put it in something hot like hot food it doesn't all come out of the wood again like paraffin wood and float to the surface of your food